So last week we saw how you could potentially influence the life of a gladiator if you were a spectator, let's say, at the Colosseum. I mean, all you had to do really was vote. You could vote for the gladiator to live, or you could vote for him to die. Well, this week let's take a look at a different sport, one where you could be a little more involved. You could throw rocks, you could throw nails and jewelry and other objects at the opposing team to get them to lose. Let's talk about chariot races. So we saw how crazy these gladiator games could get, I mean they were very deadly but they were also very entertaining. What you probably didn't know was that there was another sport that was also very well liked by the Romans, chariot races. So what is a chariot race? Well it's not really that complicated, you have a bunch of chariots and you have a bunch of horses all racing around a circular track. They were either held in a hippodrome or a circus track but don't get too confused because these things were very similar. Just think of it like a normal horse race that you go and see today of a bunch of horses all running around in a circular track. The only difference mainly was that back then the turns were a little bit sharper and we're gonna see why that played a big role in these chariot races. Now these games would attract many spectators including the women. The truth was that women were not always allowed to watch every single sport in Roman society but they were allowed to watch chariot races which made them a lot more popular. Although they weren't quite as popular as these gladiator combats, but they managed to outlast them by a long while. In a race, you would usually have different teams each denoted by a different color. In the beginning, there was only white and red representing the Roman colors, but as time went on, more colors were added such as blue and green. It's really just like any sports team that we'd have today, right? Each team has their own logo and their own set of colors. And of course, when you have a situation like that, people tend to associate themselves with different teams and of course, there's rivalry. But before we get into the rivalry, let's just look at the health hazards of these races. Because if you were like me, you probably thought that these races were very safe. Trust me, they're not, a lot of people died. The most dangerous part of the race and arguably the only entertaining part of the race were when the races would approach the turns. Remember how I mentioned that the turns were unusually sharp? Well, if the races would approach with the wrong angle or the wrong speed, they could fall off their chariot and potentially die in an accident. Or even if they did everything right, a member of the opposing team could purposely ram them off track into a wall and get them to die. This was of course illegal, but the officials didn't really enforce it nor did they do anything about it. And now getting back to the rivalry, I mentioned in the introduction that you could throw nails, you could throw jewelry and other objects at the opposing team to get them to lose. I mean, this was very common during these races. I assume that's because people were really identified with the team and if their team lost it kind of felt like they were losing so they had a lot of incentive to get the other team to lose. Rivalry was a very serious issue in these races and it got even worse when politics got involved. Political parties would associate themselves with different teams and different colors and would even sponsor some of the teams causing more opposition between them. And if you thought that was bad well we haven't even mentioned gambling. Gambling was huge in these races. I mean the rich and powerful would spend so much money on gambling it was insane. When you have so much money on the line you really have a lot of incentive to get your team to win. And if you're rich and powerful well you can get away with cheating and corruption which is what a lot of people did. And that's why you had different races hitting other races and purposely getting them to be off track. This was to get them to win because there was a lot of money at stake. Just imagine being there, right? I mean, the atmosphere must have been incredible and all everybody was waiting for were these turns. They would wait to see who would die and who would live. That was their entertaining. That and gladiator combats. I guess Romans wanted to see people die. Now I've only talked about the Romans. The truth is that these chariot races were not a Roman invasion. The Romans simply adopted them from the Greeks. Our records show that the Greeks were the ones who invented these races, but we don't actually know when. It is argued that these races could be as old as chariots themselves. Now as these games became more popular, in Greece, the Romans quickly adopted them, but they made a few changes. For one, they took it from a hippodrome, which is what the Greeks used, and moved the races to a circus track. But like I mentioned, don't get too confused, these things are very similar. The Romans also opted to have the reins, which were controlling the horses, attached to the wrists of the riders, which meant that if you were a Roman rider and you somehow fell off your chariot, which by the way happened often, you would then be dragged until your death or until you managed to cut yourself loose. Now in both the Roman version and the Greek version, the riders were usually slaves with the occasional paid professional here and there. Of course, I'm making a generalization and it wasn't always the case. The only difference between the Romans and the Greeks was that as a slave in the Roman version, you would get money each time you won a race. So if you won enough races, you could potentially buy your freedom. And that's exactly what Diocles did. He was one of the most famous Roman writers who managed to win 1,000 out of his 4,000 races. And if you don't think that's a lot, well, he earned an equivalent 
equivalent in today's money of about 15 billion US dollars, and that's with a B. So you can obviously imagine with that money he bought his freedom and he lived a very comfortable life after that. Now eventually, as time went on, the Roman Empire split and the Western Roman Empire fell. What was left was the Eastern Roman Empire, who then became the Byzantine Empire, where chariot races were still popular. I guess that's because by that time, gladiator combats had been banned because as a Christian nation, they weren't so comfortable with watching people fight to the death. So chariot races seemed like a viable option. But like all things, it eventually got unpopular and was officially ended in 1204 when Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, was sacked by crusaders as part of the fourth crusade and that's how these chariot races ended so now here's the question what do you think about these chariot races i mean how do you compare them to these gladiator comets which one would you prefer let me know leave me a comment and with that being said thanks for watching all right that was it for this week's episode of vlogs of history i really do hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something if you did please leave a like share it to a friend and subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out Remember that these episodes come out every single Monday and if you missed the previous one, there's a link on your screen. If not, there's a link in the description. As always, I'm your host Darius Claus and you can follow me on social media. My links are on the screen. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next week.